I'll provide all the resources I used and supplies listed in the description. Get your Raspberry Pico and a 40 pin header and set it up like this. Once set up, solder the pins to the Pico. After soldering it together, connect it to your computer via micro USB cable. So when you connect your Pico to your computer, you should be able to see a new drive. And this is it. Um, you're going to download CircuitPython from here, the libraries from here, and um, my code from my GitHub here. Uh, I already downloaded it, so it's all here. So what you want to do first is drag over the UF2 file into here. So now the new drive should be called CircuitPy, and you would want to get the library from the Adafruit libraries that we've downloaded before. Go down to Adafruit HID, and then drag this into the library folder on CircuitPy. You should be able to see it. And then once it's done, you're going to want to copy over the code from my GitHub onto the circuit python and replace the file. You're going to want to download the MU editor from codewith.mu. After having it downloaded, you load up the code from the circuit python and it'll look like this. And you're going to want to comment out the gamepad.move joysticks because you're going to get an error saying that the ranges are not between negative 127 to 127. And now let's configure the whammy bar. Before we start configuring the whammy bar, we need to connect the whammy bar to the Pico first. I've already removed the back plate off the controller and have hooked the whammy bar to the alligator clips. You're going to need to play around with the alligator clips to make sure that the whammy bar moves in a, from a neutral position to a positive position. I'll show this later in the, in the code. As you can see, I have my alligator clips connected to male to female DuPont wires and I'll start connecting it to the Pico. I have a pinout diagram that I included in the GitHub files, but I'll show it up here too. Now we just need to follow the diagram and connect the wires accordingly. After connecting the whammy bar, comment out the gamepad move joystick section and uncomment the testing section of the code. Make sure the current variable is equal to the value minus 0 divided by 1. Now save and click on the serial button to open the REPL. After playing with the whammy bar, get the lowest value and replace 0 with a value lower than that number. Next save and then use the higher number to replace the 1 spot. Then, after saving, you should see that the range should be from 0 to 1. If there are values outside that range, try changing the respective value. Once satisfied, copy and paste that new number into the gamepad move joysticks command. Then in the Windows search bar, search Game Controllers. This built-in Windows application will help you make sure that each button and joystick works on your controller. Now you should see the Z-axis react with the whammy bar. If you have a joystick that you want to configure, follow the same instructions and replace the first two none values with the joystick X and Y variable respectively. Let's move on to the frets. If you want to do the mechanical fret mod, I'll link the tutorial in the description, but we're not going to do that because the Stratocaster frets are fine for me. The frets are the top with labeled high position and the bottom are called low position. And I'll try to use both of it in this project. 
but if you don't have a shadow caster, you don't have to worry about this for now. Now to test out which button is which, I've connected the button for green to the far wire and the voltage in to the red wire. After pressing the green fret button on the guitar, we see button 5 flash on the game controller settings. This is what we want and we can further test out each button. After testing out if each fret works, remember the orientation the wires are in relation to the frets. Use this way of testing for the plus, minus, and strum bar, but I won't be using the D-pad for this project. This is my test for using both high and low frets on the same button. So for soldering wires, here is a quick process of how I do it. There are better tutorials on YouTube, so I would recommend watching those before soldering your wires. So first, strip the wire. Then, wrap the wire around the male DuPont end. Then, solder the wire to the male DuPont connector. Then, put the heat shrink over the soldered connection and use a heat gun or lighter. After connecting everything together, this is what it looks like. The thick red wire is for connecting all the inputs to the voltage out from the Pico. You might need to make room for the Pico. For the Stratocaster, I sawed off the battery case and glued the cover back on. This is the end of the tutorial. After this, I just talk about how I did my mechanical strum bar mod and show a demo of the guitar working. A modification that I did was a mechanical strum bar mod where I removed the original magnetic sensors and hot glued mechanical switches, in this case, box navies. If you're going to do this, make sure to not get glue on the stems and angle the switch downwards so the strum bar doesn't get caught on the stem. I also added a piece of PCB to the bottom of the switch so I could get less glue on the switch itself while holding the switch in place. This is the comparison after the mod and before the mod. And now here's the demo of the controller. <laughs> 